Doc, go on it, Brady. Would you look at these Cubs? That'll bring up Andre Dawson. The crowd really showing their appreciation for Andre. Now, this is baseball. This is the way the game's supposed to be played. The first pitch to Dawson, swung on. Looped into right field. Hey, hey! Ball in there for a base hit. Sandberg rounding third, but he'll have to hold. And that loads up the bases for Brian Diane. The Cubs have come alive. No outs. Bases loaded. Nepper, the big left-hander, working out of a stretch. The pitch swung on. It's a drive to right. It's deep. Baby, hey. it's out of here. It is. He's out of here. He's out of here. He's out of here. He's out of here. He's out of And man, oh man, just listen to that crowd. I don't know. It may be a little early in the season for pennant fever, but you just you have to it. wonder, could this be it? Is this the year the Cubs go all the way? You bet you, man. <laughs> This is the year! Nah, they'll fade. Cubs always fade in the clutch. Not this year, Whitey. Just you wait. <laughs> Cubs fans still on their feet as Bailey goes out to the mound to talk to Nepper and try to settle him down. A little recap in the bottom of the eighth. All right, class. Pass your spelling books forward. Oh, and remember, everyone, your reports on a famous person are due a week from Friday. Hey, Jody. Got your report subject picked out? Uh-uh. Hey, you want to stay after and play some more? Cam, I'm going to try and beat the record. I'm not going to beat the record. Come on, just for a little while. Uh-uh, I'm going to beat it. Perhaps Jody Waldarski and Eric Soderstrom would like to stay after school and see the principal. Thank you. Uh, oh, all right. Um, on your mark, get set, go! All right, class, dismiss. Leftovers. I know, dear, but if you have to work, you have to work. She'll understand. Okay, Marsha. See you tonight. Yeah. I'll tell Jody just as soon as she comes. Oh, wait a minute. Here she comes now. Some kind of kid. <laughs> Mom, Grandpa, huh? did I beat it? Well, almost. Pretty near, see? Huh. All because of Grandma's stupid rule. Hmm. What's Grandma got to do with it? Well, hmm. if I didn't have to go by the bakery, I would have missed that dumb red light. And if I had missed that dumb red light, I would have had the record easy, see? Well, it's not a dumb rule. Here, my back hand. That's it. There, there. When you were a kid, mm -hmm. did you have to check in after school? No, but you know, things were kind of different then. In a way, I did beat it, huh? Yeah, in a way, you did. That's right, yeah. Well, how'd the uh, spelling test go? Okay, but now we gotta do a report on a famous person. Mm. Got any ideas? Well, it's Abraham Lincoln, uh, William Shakespeare, and... Uh, What if I just do one on you? Me? Oh, no. You better stick to somebody really famous. Well, you won all those trophies. 
You must have done something famous. Well, uh, I, uh, don't know whether this uh, counts or not, but when I was your age, I saw the uh, fight of the century, Dempsey's versus Stunning. You did? Mm. What happened? Oh, plenty. You see, Dempsey was a slugger. He had a right hook that was so mean-tempered that they nicknamed it Iron Mike. The first six rounds were kind of slow. Then came the seventh round. Clang went the bell. Out came Tunney, out came Dempsey. Kind of reckless-like, he's dancing around. Tunney's dancing backward, 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 backward. All of a sudden, Dempsey connects with the left hook. Then with the right, then with the left. And down goes Tunney. Come on, keep going. Well, that's when the famous long count took place. But uh, not many people remember that when that happened, when, when Dempsey connected and Tunney went down, he knocked his mouth guard out, clear across the ring into somebody's lap. Soldiers Field, September 22nd, 1927. The Battle of the Ages, they call it. And I was there. But just going to a fight doesn't make you famous, does it? It does if it's your lap. <laughs> and your name is Joe Woldarski. <laughs> that is so neat. Yeah. <laughs> Variety is our strong point, and uh, our fall line, tops. Materials from virtually all parts of the world, and production at an all-time high quality. Now take a moment to look that over. Well, Darsky, he's here. That buyer from New York. Aren't you done yet? All right, no. One minute. Three one months minute. I gave you to finish this off. Come on, come on! Right, Artic, please, one minute. Come here. I want, I, I want to show you something. Lasky, turn those pages. Nice, huh? What do you think? And look at this. Sexy little thing, huh? Is that sexy? You don't like them, do you? She can do better, right, Waldarski? No, Artie, I can't do better. First you tell me the end of next week, and then you now tell you me Now you listen here. Perfect. What? Oh, of course they are. Waldarski is brilliant. Slow, but brilliant. We'll hire another assistant. Another assistant? I don't even have... I'd uh, settle for that race. <laughs> we'll Mr. Blumenfeld, Mr. Blumenfeld, you have a pawn ring. Just Waldarski, or is there another name that goes with that? Uh, Marsha. <laughs> Thanks for the good word. Jack, Wyndham. You shouldn't have to thank me. You're very good. Where'd you get your training? Uh, Chicago Art School. But that only got me a job as a pattern cutter. I've only been designing for two years. You got talent. I'd really like to talk to you about this, say, over dinner. I'd love to, but uh, Artie's got me on a deadline, and uh, I got a kid at home, so. Oh, you're married? Yeah. Well, not really, but I really should be going. Don't worry about Blumenfeld, and I'll have you home by 7. Cross my heart. 7.30 at the latest. These cookies are for supper. Please? Oh, all right. Just one. Don't tell my mom, OK? She says it spoils my appetite. Your mom is working late tonight. So I think you're all right. Okay. You do the bushes. I'll start something. OK. Oh. Here's the rent. Oh, thanks, Mrs. Itzik. I had my own little studio, Keats Graphics. <laughs> it's my maiden name. I may go back to using it after the divorce is final. Haven't heard yet. And I'm boring you to death, aren't I? Not at all. Uh, anyway, Joe was just starting out on the Board of Trade. We fell in love, got married, and a few years later, I had Jody. That's about it. Sounds like the American dream. <laughs> yeah, it does, doesn't it? No kidding. Yeah, I knew most of them back then. Uh, Artie Shaw, Benny Goodman, Lynn Miller. They all play Chicago. They all needed haircuts. <laughs> but I've always been partial to long hair music. 
That's a funny use of the word, isn't it? <laughs> hmm. Second cup in one evening. We should tell me what's bothering her. Um, where was I? The trophies, Grandpa. Oh, yeah. So that's it? You never hear from him? Well, Jody gets a postcard now and then. Just enough to keep her hopes alive that someday Daddy will show up and everything will be fine again. You gotta be tough on her. Yeah. On everybody. Tell me, if it's really over between you and Joe, why do you keep living at his parents? We couldn't really afford to move at first. But, you know, maybe if I get that raise. Ah, uh, who knows? Maybe you should start enjoying yourself. <laughs> so how's that? Perfect. I just know I'm going to get an A on this report now. Hi, everybody. Uh -huh. Hi, sorry I'm late. I hope you've eaten. You missed a good supper. I had a bite on the way home. Oh, good, good. What about you, kiddo? Don't you have homework? Um, it's my report on a famous person. Oh, yeah. And I'm doing it on Grandpa. Well, I tried to get her to do it on Abraham Lincoln, but she wouldn't listen. <laughs> okay. Well, come on up when you're done. Okay. Good night. Thanks again for watching her. Oh, another thing I forgot to tell you. I used to be a pretty good singer. Really? Yeah. Now, just imagine it's uh, summer 1933. Soldier Field, Chicago. The first all-star baseball game in history. And who do you think they decided to ask to sing the uh, national anthem, hmm? You? Hmm. Really? Yeah. I didn't know you could sing. What is it? It was addressed to Mrs. Joseph Waldarski. I really didn't mean to open it. You know how we're always getting each other's mail mixed up. Yeah. Divorce papers. Does Grandpa Joe know about this? I didn't think you'd go through with it. Don't do it. Marcia, please. I know he'll come back. You should think about Jody. Lily, I am thinking about Jody. I'm also thinking about myself. He's been gone over two years. We've got to get on with our lives. But I know he'll come back. Is there another man? No, there isn't. But there should be. You think it's right, what Joe did to us? No, I don't. But I will not have you dating another man while you're living in this house. That's not right either. If it hurts your feelings, then I'm sorry, but we'll have to move out. Well, if that's the way you want it. That's the way I want it. Fine! Lil. I have had it. Lil. Oh, dear. What is it, Grandpa? Oh. Nothing, honey. It's just a dream. Just a bad dream. Okay, rinse due the first of the month. We got that. Trash pickup is Thursday. We got that. I guess that's everything, Mrs. Waldarski, except for your signature. Oh, that's, uh, that's Jody's. It goes upstairs. Okay. Mrs. Waldarski, your signature? Oh, I'm sorry, of course. Um, this is what we agreed to, isn't it? Um, uh, yes. And there's nothing wrong, is there? I mean, you do want this apartment. Came to see my girl. Someone's coming to look at the apartment tonight. Oh? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, good. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm a little lonely this one. You're not still angry, are you? No, no. If I hadn't opened my big mouth, if I hadn't opened that letter. Oh, Lil, stop blaming yourself. It's not your fault. It's not anybody's fault. 
This thing's been building up a long time. It, 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 these things happen. Anyway, it'll it'll all go away. It'll go away. Let's see. I think of it this way. When Jody comes over to see us on weekends, think how much happier she'll be to see us. You're right. Come Saturday, I'm going to make her something special. Good, 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 good. <laughs> The uh, apartment. Yeah. You do have an apartment for rent? Uh, yeah, come on in. Uh, Lil, uh, this gentleman would like to see the apartment. Is it clean? Uh, certainly it's clean. What about pets? Oh, well, one or two within reason. What I mean is, do you have pets? Oh, no. <laughs> and no children, I presume? I can't live with children either. Well, we have a granddaughter that comes over on weekends. Would you, uh... Would you like to see the place? Hello, Mrs. Dietzik. I need the light bulbs. Uh-huh. She works the night shift. You'll hardly know she's here. I'll take it. Ah. Not too high on the sideburns. Yeah, you say that every time. <laughs> What do you think you're doing? To dust off your trophy. No! I, I mean, uh, it, it's, it's too high, it's dangerous. You might fall and hurt yourself. I'll be careful. Jody, don't argue with me. Well, it's just that you said when I beat your record, I could choose any trophy I wanted. I just wanted to see. Well, you haven't beaten any records yet, so get down. Come on, get down off the chair, please. Tell me, Joe, how'd you ever get all those trophies anyway? Oh, can't anybody talk about anything else? Forget the stupid thing. Well, I didn't want to bring this up, but you're probably going to have to be taking them down pretty soon anyway, for good. What are you saying, Ernie? It's your lease, Joe. I might not be able to renew it. I got people interested in this place. What for? It's called gentrification. In a couple of years, the street's going to be nothing but fancy boutiques. Ernie, I've leased this place from you for 41 years. I can make the rent. Well, maybe you ought to think about retiring. Oh, pfft. That's what I'm going to do. Wife and I are thinking about moving to Phoenix. Get away from these winters. Why don't you and Lily pack up and come with us? Oh. What? Grandpa, you wouldn't move, would you? No, 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 no. We're not moving anywhere. There's been too much moving around already lately. He's just about had it. Have you still got that one I gave you? Oh, wait, 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 wait. I got it, I got it, I got it there. Yeah. Hey, uh, I shouldn't have snapped at you earlier. I'm, I'm sorry. It's okay. Well, something isn't. What is it? Well, it's just, you wouldn't move or anything, would you? I just told you about that. We're not going anywhere. <laughs> hey. I'll bet you don't know how these things came into existence, do you? Well, neither did your dad when he was your age. <laughs> you see, barbers used to be sort of like doctors. When you were sick, they'd uh, let the bad blood out of your system. That's what the red stripe is for. Didn't know that, did you, huh? <laughs> well, neither did I then. So when your dad asked, I, uh, I had to make up an answer. I told him it was because I was Polish. You know, barber pole, get it? <laughs> he made me promise that I'd never turn it off, day or night, open or closed. But, Grandpa, what's that got to do with anything? Well, because if I quit or moved away, I, I'd have to break a promise. <laughs> Besides, that old thing has been spinning around like that for over 40 years. You know, I'll bet that if it takes a couple of more spins, I just may have myself a record. Grandpa, they don't give trophies for stuff like that. Well, if they were smart, they would. Oh, Grandpa. Jody? Jody, come out, they put these things away. Jody, answer that, will you? Hello? Hi, Chuck. 
Uh, hang on a second. Jody, where are you? Jack, something's wrong. Jody's not here. I'll call you back. Sure, they'll be back soon. You want coffee or something? No, no, thanks. <laughs> Hi, Mom! Shut oh, my up. gosh, you should have been with us. We walked all the way down to the water tower and took the L back, and there was something wrong with the race, so I kept going, Screech! You did that perfect. Jody, I thought I made it clear. I don't want you going anywhere near those trees. It's all right, she was with me. But that's not the point. It's... Why are you always undoing everything I try to teach my child? Well, I'm sorry, Marsha, I didn't mean to. Mom, Grandpa didn't do anything. Come on. Come on, we're going home. But, Mom... Come on. Goodbye. Bye. But, Mom... But when I think of you, it makes me feel all warm inside. And you know what else? If I were in charge of all the wishes in the world, I'd send them all to you. And have a wonderful birthday. And remember, Daddy loves you. He's coming home. I think he is. Honey, I don't think he was saying that. I think he was just wishing you a happy birthday. But maybe. Well, anyway, I've got a terrific day planned for us. We're going to the harbor. And Jack's going to be here. He's coming all the way from New York. Special for your birthday. And he wants to bring you a present. Is there anything special you want? Yeah, that new baseball glove I told you about. Uh, sweetheart, you, you've already got a baseball glove. Isn't there something else you'd rather have? Hey, maybe Dad will bring me one. Just don't get your hopes up, okay? Please. Just go to sleep. Good night, Mom. Good night. Good night. Now, I told them you'd just run in. You can open the present when we get to the harbor, all right? Why can't we just stay here? I don't want to go on a picnic anyway. <sighs> don't worry. It'll be all right. I know, I know. I like her. She's a neat kid. Birthdays are always the hardest. She keeps hoping her father will show up. Who are you? I'll ask the questions around here. What are you doing on this property? Well, I came here to see my grandparents. It's my birthday. There's a note around there somewhere. Just look around. Never read his writing. There was an old man named Waldarski who ran off without leaving his house key. Though the harbor does beckon, there's a barber, I reckon, who's expecting you right about Nowski. <laughs> I knew we should not have stopped. <laughs> Kid. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
would stop by the house for a few minutes. Well, he just kept carried away sometimes, and after watching him blow up all those balloons, it seemed such a the shame. The point is, we made other plans. Oh, uh, sorry, this... Lily, this is Jack Wyndham. He's a friend of mine. Hello. How do you do? I didn't know who to invite, Marcia, so I walked around the neighborhood and grabbed anyone I saw. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> For you. Thanks, Jack. Oh, I'm sorry. This is Jack. He says you're a real poet. Oh, well, glad you could make it, Jack. <laughs> Thanks. Open it, Jody. Well, what do you think? Thank you. There's more? <laughs> And here's the best part. I ran an old buzzer the other day, and guess what? <whistles> Two tickets to the Cubs game this afternoon. How about that? Oh, huh? Joe, <laughs> I think Marcia was planning to take Jody to the harbor. Oh, please, Mom? Oh, you, you don't mind, do you, Marcia? <laughs> Why should I mind? <laughs> OK, birthday girl. Let's follow old buzzy. I guess you get to see a lot of games from the scoreboard, huh? Not hardly. I work nights mostly. Keep the equipment up, keep the bums out of the park. Uh, that's why they call me the night supervisor. Grandpa says that you run everything. Uh, yeah, uh, you do, Buzzy. Hey, come on, come on. game start. By the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. Oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rockets ran glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that Maybe I shouldn't say anything. They seemed like such nice, ordinary people. I never said they weren't nice people. It just gets a little trying having to compete all the time. I'm sorry. I'm just so tired of losing the things that I love. I don't want to lose Jody, too. You won't. Really? Promise. Tell Grandpa something. I need to call him. It's important. <laughs> honey, it's almost midnight. I just want to know what we're doing next weekend. Well, honey, they're, they're sleeping now. Besides, it's time you and I had a weekend together, huh? You should be making friends here, exploring the neighborhood, playing with kids your own age. If Dad was here, he wouldn't care if I saw them or not. Let's just talk about it in the morning.
Jody. Did you want to talk to me about your test result? Jody, is something bothering you? Jody, how did you get here? I took the L. You what? Did your mom know? It's okay. I wrote it right out, like the one you wrote. Only I'm not a real poet yet. I don't want you writing the L by yourself. You heard what your mother said. But I wanted to see you. The apartment was lonely. <laughs> well, promise me you'll never do that again. Hmm? Why? Don't you want to see me? Well, of course I do. But, <laughs> uh, you know, your mother. He's always working with that Jack guy. She doesn't care. Of course she cares. Don't say that, Jody. She cares very much. Grandpa? Hmm. Why did my dad go away? Didn't he love me? Of course he loved you. And he still loves you. And he always will. But then why did he go away? Uh, come on. Come on. Let's take a walk. Let's sit down. You know, kid, sometimes things happen to people, even nice people like your dad. I guess he just sort of felt trapped. Otherwise, uh... oh. Did I ever tell you about this watch? It's very special. My dad gave it to me. I told your dad when he was just a little kid that when he was all grown up, this would be his. Well, he couldn't wait. And one day he grabbed it, took it outside to show it to some of his friends before he realized that he'd lost it. But he denied it. Did you kill him? No, but I was pretty mad. You see, I always tried to point out to him the importance of being honest, telling the truth. Now, losing the watch was one thing, but lying was another. Well, I guess he felt so sort of, you know, trapped in his own lie that he went up to his room, locked himself in, wouldn't come out. <laughs> <laughs> well, how'd you get him to come out? Did you break the door now? No, but I forgave him. <laughs> and that was my lesson. I realized that, uh, after all, that my boy was worth a great deal more than an old watch. That's something we have to remember, Jody. That which is important. The people we love, our family. And as far as your dad goes, I guess he found himself in a, another kind of trap, another kind of lie. Do you understand what I'm trying to say, honey? I think so. But how come you still have the watch? Oh, Grandma found it in her rose bushes. <laughs> but I mean, how come you still have the watch? You said you'd give it to my dad when he grew up. Well, <laughs> there's still time. Isn't it getting chilly? I prefer to wait out here. Where have they gone this time? Where's Jody? Oh, uh, oh, she's all right. I took her home. You did what? Yeah. You mean she came here alone? Yeah. How did she get here? Whoa. She took the L, didn't she? Didn't she? Well, I talked to her about that. She, she won't do it again. What was she doing here to begin with? I specifically told her. She was lonesome, and frankly, so was I. You should have called me. You had no right taking her anywhere. Marcia, she's our granddaughter. And she's my daughter. I think that comes first when we're talking about rights. Maybe if you didn't leave her alone so much. She's not alone. She's got, she's got lots of friends. She's got Mrs. Kuntz right next door. I, I can't help it if I have to work. Look, let's not argue. It's, what's done is done. I'll, 
The important thing is that she's home, safe and sound. Yes, for now. But what about next time? I mean, you keep luring her over here with, with presents and, and, and ball games and false dreams. But... Her father is not coming back. And even if he did, it's too late. It's much too late. Can't you see that? Marcia. She's still our granddaughter. That will never change. And Joe is still our son. Oh, your son is a ghost. Get out of here. Lil, calm down. Calm down now. Get out now. I will. Just don't expect to see us here next weekend. Or the weekend after that. And don't either one of you even go near Jody again. Unless I say so. Oh, Marsha, wait. Marsha, not... There you go. Now, is this your first haircut, cowboy? Huh? Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, you want your hands out, huh? Okay. It's all right with me. I think you don't want to tuck your hair in there, just a, just a hair cloth, that's it. Leave your hair out. Ow. Oh, I know, I know, I know. Now, look here. See here? It's a nice area because it's cute. It's a little echoey in here. A little carpeting should fix that, though. Can I, uh, help you? No, thanks, son. Uh, look, you lower the ceiling and the difference will be amazing. Would you fellas mind telling me what you're doing here? Look, don't mind us. We're just doing a little, uh, preparation. It's going to be a boutique. What are you talking about? I put a lease on this place. Well, it's just a matter of time, isn't it? They told us you wouldn't be able to make the payments. You, uh, you're gonna have to make your preparation some other place. Now, look, let's be reasonable. I mean, we've got to have some sort of lead time. Come on, get out, get out. Sorry to keep you waiting, cowboy. You don't have to pray. Nothing to worry about. <laughs> Gussied up with the <laughs> Oh, you're going to see about a loan today, I'm right? not going to see about one, Lil. I'm going to get one. Well, then, you better see about a little loan guarantee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, better make that two days. Now, if you get somebody new, don't forget to tell them who you are. We've been banking there for 40 years. And don't forget. What's new? How come you never asked me to come over anymore? Well, you don't think I like this deal any better than you, do you? Oh. You better go. It, it wouldn't be good if, you, if your mom found out I was here. Wait for me at the park. Uh, I get out right after this. Please. Please.
Hey, Grandpa? According to him, he is. <laughs> Do you ever wish you could have been a great musician? I still can. I can be anything I want to be. So can you. Mm. We are such stuff as dreams are built on. Shakespeare. Don't they teach the classes in your school anymore? No. Mm. Tell me the truth, Jody. How'd you get out of that afternoon program? I said I had a doctor's appointment. I'll have to think of something different next time. Next time? What do you mean, next time? Listen, honey. Tuesday. <laughs> They always bring us here after school. How about them? But, look, I, I'd love to, honey, but we'll just end up in a tub of hot water if we keep this up. Especially if your mom finds out. But she can if we don't say anything. We can be like, like a secret club. More like a couple of conspirators, you mean. I don't know. Tuesday? Yes. All right. <laughs> yeah, what are you? I came to pick up the glasses you promised me three weeks ago. Oh, uh, here, you can have these as soon as I wash them up. Tell me something. Um, how'd you happen to end up here? Don't you have a family? That's my business. No, I'm just asking. My wife passed away. I have a son and two grandchildren. I thought you didn't like children. Don't they ever come to visit you? No, uh, if you don't mind my asking. My son is very busy. He has a very demanding job. Now, wait a minute. Uh, come on, come right back. You want to make a bet? All you got to do is take the middle glass out of the middle without touching it. Without touching it? Yeah. Impossible. Want to bet? Just a dollar. Come on, a lousy dollar. Well, I know it's a trick, but it's still impossible. All right? <laughs> Abracadabra. Yeah. It's no longer in the middle, huh? <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Joseph, did you huh? trick him? He's mad enough at us already. Oh, he isn't mad. He's just lonesome. <laughs> mm. Great. Hmm? You need some help or anything? Is this how you do your math? Math's boring. Grandpa says you shouldn't waste your time on boring things. Oh, he does, does he? Well, okay. Um, so who's your favorite baseball player? Brian Sandberg, of course. You know how to figure his batting average? No. Wouldn't you like to know how? Yeah. Okay. Well, first, we need to know two things. We need to know how many at-bats he's had and how many hits he's got. He's had 627 at-bats and um, 178 hits. OK, so now what we do is we divide the number of hits by the number of at-bats. That's it. So what's his batting average? Uh, I get 284. Is that what it says on the card? Yeah. Gee, Mom, I didn't know you knew anything about baseball. <laughs> oh! Uh -huh. Why can't I just see you every day after school? Oh, I'd like that, Julie. I would very much, a lot. But uh, you, you, you should make friends in your new neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Come on, let's see what you can do. I better not. Don't you want to play? Grandpa, they're boys. They're better than me. Oh, come on, Jody. A quarter says she can nail your best pitch. 
Grandpa? Another quarter says you're better than you think you are. for two guys and you know it. Hell, there's barely enough for one. Well, it's, it's, it's bound to pick up. Listen, Joy, I found another job today. Can I ask what it is? A waiter. I start tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I found something here. I thought you might like it. Would you look at that? Oh, it's kind of banged up. No, 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 it'll shine up fine. The batting champion, Joseph Keller. I found it down the street in a junk shop. <laughs> well, you've got a good eye, Whitey. It'll fit right in. What a shame, though, to end up in a junk shop. You know, this, this probably represents the proudest moment in somebody's life. It should be cared for. Treasure, given a home. Well, I have a good home here. <laughs> Thank you, Whitey. It's a beauty. Hey, we had a few good laughs, didn't we, Joe? You and me and the kid. Hey, good luck, Whitey. Harmless enough to me. They always do. Oh, Christmas. Uh, do you know Jody Waldarski? Jody? Uh huh. <laughs> Have you seen her around here today? No, I haven't. Sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Hold it right there. Hungry, aren't you? Why couldn't you just give him your name? Well, I didn't want Marcia to know. Well, she sure knows now. Yeah. If you think she was angry before, my ears are burning. Mm. I think we're in for some trouble, Joe. She says there's laws to protect people from harassment. There you go, worrying again. I tell you, a few days will all blow over. Besides, what can she do? 
There are any laws against seeing your own granddaughter, are there? Well, I'm just telling you to be careful. I'm telling you I'm hungry. Mm -hmm. Let's go home, Lou. Come on. Mm -hmm. And if he shows up again, I want oh, you to tell sure, me about I guess. it. It wasn't his yeah. fault. And after school, I want you to go directly over to Mrs. Koontz, all right? Are you serious? Jody, I've got yeah, a I'm big show home. coming up, and I don't know when I'm going to be able to be home, all right? Jody? Okay, Mom. Go on. Oh, boy. You should have seen it. They had the cuffs on and everything. Yeah. They shoved them in the cruiser. Oh, you never did beat his record, did you? on that blouse. At least show it off. <laughs> Ladies, I beg you on bended knees, move it. Please, please, please. Wait. Oh. Jack, what are you doing here? Oh, I just thought I'd pop in. Oh, jeez. You're not busy, are you? <laughs> okay, bye. D oh, God. You don't be impossible. Sit. Okay. <sighs> You don't like it? Oh. Can't think about it, can you? <laughs> Hardly. I can't just smell it at least. <laughs> Michael Croman, batting champion. Don't breathe. Well, Darsky, how I ever let you talk me into this, <laughs> I'll never know. Marcia, I think you should come out here a second. She's busy. Whatever it is, it can wait. No, this can't. Marcia. Jody. Jody, what's Where wrong? What is it, honey? Oh, God, oh, God, what happened? Tell me. It was him again, wasn't it? That's it, you understand me? I don't want you going near him or his shop again. Now look at me. I don't want to. This is the last time, you understand me? I'm not kidding, Jody. I don't want to see him ever again. <laughs> Damn him and his barber shop.
think I finally got through to her. Maybe now we can start leading normal lives again. Marsha, maybe you should consider getting out of here. Well, I like this apartment fine. Yeah. I mean the whole mess. The city, the memories, the in-laws. Oh, no, I told you that's all been taken care of. Mm -hmm. Besides, where would that leave me? I've still got to make a living. You could make a better one. In New York. <laughs> I could never afford to live in New York. I know a nice place. There's a great view of the city, a fireplace. There is one drawback. Let me guess. I'd have to share a bathroom with a guy called Jack. Marsha, it would be good for you. <laughs> I don't and know. And me and Jody. I don't know. I don't know. I'd just be running away. I, I, I got too much to think about right now. It's too much to settle. I, just, I, I don't know. It's just, it's not easy, Joe. You just, just don't confuse me, all right? What? What's wrong? Maybe you do have some things to settle. You just call me Joe. Mr. Nakamura. Probably out of hot water again. We gotta get a new heater, Joe. Or a new ceiling. Oh, let him not. Can't afford it. You don't have to be so gruff. Mara. Oh. Hold your horses. Mr. Joseph Waldarski? Yes. Was it? We can't see Jody, call her, or write to her. What is this? A restraining order. You were right to worry, Lil. Uh, she really did it. Well, I'll have to talk to her. Are you serious? She's not going to reason with you now. What do you propose? Look, Mr. Nakamura, I can't fix that hot water heater now. These walls are paper thin. So what? You know about the walls and you moved in here. Oh, that's not what I mean. I saw the marshal come, and I know why. So you know. I guess everybody in the damn neighborhood knows by now. Years ago, I was a clerk in a law firm. I know a little bit about the law and restraining orders. Maybe I can help you. We couldn't afford to pay you. I'll make a deal. My services for hot water. <laughs> you got a deal. <laughs> Let me get dressed. <laughs> you think we ought to fight it? Hell yes. Of course we should fight it. She's made her position clear enough. If we don't fight a little, we may lose our granddaughter forever. I'm afraid, Joe. Just afraid this is only going to make it worse. What could be worse than this? OK, we filed the petition. That's the first step. Next, we've got to get a hearing date set. Uh, it just all seems so darn complicated. Don't you think we should try to get a lawyer? Oh, no, we can do it. Uh, Besides, you couldn't afford a lawyer. I don't know. Maybe I should just forget the whole thing. Joe, huh? I know this is all very upsetting for you. Yeah. But let me get one thing absolutely clear. Nobody's playing nice anymore. So you better be ready to fight. Because if you don't, you'll never see your grandchild again. Joe, do you want me to help you now or not? Good. Then I'll represent you. <laughs> but you're not a lawyer. I know. But this is only a hearing. And there's no law against having somebody accompany you. Are you sure you want to get involved in this? This is my fight, not yours. Joe, you're not the only one who's been disappointed by his children.
And I understand you have met with the child in question on three separate occasions. Do you mind telling us what your findings were? Well, Jody's school performance has deteriorated badly in the past month. Also, she's become quite introverted of late. Now, do you have a professional opinion as to why? <laughs> well, first, there's the separation from her father. She still has feelings of anxiety and guilt. The second, and far more unusual in my experience, is an almost obsessive identification with her paternal grandparents. Principally... Objection! Denied. Now, you say this situation's unusual. Uh, how unusual? Well, her hero worship. Not only that, but the fantasies she's created to support it. When do we get to talk? Hey, you were great. Yeah. I know, it's really kind of interesting. Thank you. Great time. By their past actions, Your Honor, they have shown themselves to be totally insensitive to the best interests of the child and the express wishes of her mother. And we feel that any further contact between the child and these former in-laws would only serve to make a bad situation worse. Therefore, Your Honor, we believe that the petition brought before this court is totally without merit, and we ask the court to uphold the restraining order. Mr. Nakamura. Your Honor, this morning we have heard much about the interests of the child and the parent, but not one word so far about the interests of the grandparents. It's time we turned our attention to the issue of their rights. Now, in the state of New Jersey, where once Excuse you... me, Mr. Nakamura, but this is not New Jersey. And any grant of visitation in this case is still a privilege, not a right. Now then, let's continue. Your Honor, I cannot. So you must win this yourself. Uh, Your Honor, I'm not a fancy lawyer. I'm just a barber. I have been for 41 years in the same shop. I've lived here in Chicago. Mr. Woldarski, please. Could you restrict your comments to the issue before this court? Yeah, I, I'm sorry, Your Honor. Um, Lillian, my wife here, and I have been listening to this lawyer refer to us as Marsha's former in-law. But there isn't any such thing as ex-grandparents or ex-granddaughters. And once you love a child the way we love Jody, there's no Xing that out either. I don't know how to explain it. But, uh, well, take a tree, for example. Could it grow without roots? And if there weren't new young buds shooting out its branches every spring, wouldn't those same roots wither and die? When we walked into this courthouse today, I, I stopped and looked up at the American flag flying over our heads. Every time I see that flag, I think about how the Woldarski's tree came to be transplanted from Poland into this new soil. It made the trip over as one tiny little sapling. You see, my parents died when I was very young. I was sent to a county orphanage in this new country. What I would have given back then for a grandfather, a grandmother to teach and guide me. It, it's not easy to go forward when you don't know who you are, or where you've been. L Lily and I are Jody's heritage. Her, her, her past. If we if we stand guilty of anything, then we stand guilty of love. We love Jody so very much, and, and she loves us. Ask her, bring her near and ask her. Jody's a part of that tree that came over from Poland so long ago, and has been chopped and uprooted enough. All we're asking, Your Honor, is to let us tend it, and nurture it, and give it sun, so it will grow. Recess while I interview the child in my chambers. Here. How can you even think of eating? What's taking them so long? What's to worry about? Jody will tell them the truth in there. I don't trust them. Who knows what they might have coached her to say? Jody? Oh, have a little faith, Lil. <laughs> 
It has long been established that the court has broad discretion in determining visitation privileges. But in doing so, it must view the totality of circumstances, taking into account the express wishes and desires of the child. Therefore, based on the testimony of Jody Waldarski, the child in question, and preceding evidence, we find that a grant of privileges to the petitioning grandparents at this time would not be in the best interests of the child. No! Mr. Waldarski. But it's a lie. Tell him, Jody. You're a lie. You're a lie. Jody. This hearing is adjourned. All rise. I'm, I'm not giving up, Lil. I think I found something. I mean, at least Illinois has laws about grandparents' rights. Not all states do. Well, the law is a law, isn't it? Nope, it varies all over the country. Now, say she moves, another state won't necessarily honor the decision made here. You could end up spending the rest of your life going from court to court. In some states, adoption by a step-parent could buy you from visiting. You mean a total stranger has more rights than we do? The law is very unemotional, Joe. I'm sorry. Sorry? I'm not giving up. We're going to fight this thing all the way to the Supreme Court, if necessary. We'll, we'll get lawyers, whatever it takes. I'll sell the barber shop. Go out and get a job. I'll, I'll even sell this damn house if I have to. You understand? Well, I think he looks pretty good. A little thin, maybe. But a couple of good meals will fix that. No, he looked worse than that, Lou. He looked beaten. No, not our Joe. Anyway, he's come home again. Maybe things will get back to normal now. I don't think anything will ever get back to normal again. Well, I'm going to fix up his room. I don't know that he's going to stay very long. Well, I'm going to fix it up anyway. I don't know if your mother would like to see me here. Mom, I'm sure she would. I'm gonna be at Grandpa Joe's until I have to leave. I'll call you. Leave? You have to leave? Yeah. But why? You can't! Jody, hasn't anybody ever talked to you? Ever explained to you how things are now? 
between your mother and me? And he said something stupid about stars getting crossed up or something. <sighs> Shakespeare. I don't know if I can put it any better than that. Except to say that for a long time I wasn't very happy. And that's what got those stars so crossed up, Jody. Because of me? No, because of me. Maybe someday you'll understand. I'll never understand! Jody, listen to me. It wasn't because of you. I've been doing a lot of lying to myself, but I wouldn't lie to you. Yes, you would. You're just like Grandpa, a liar and a phony. What do you mean, just like Grandpa? All those stories he tells, the trophies, everything. They're all a bunch of lies, just like you. Jody, don't. What? Wait. Jody. Hello, Marsha. Joe! What are you doing here? Where's Jody? Has she seen you? Yeah, she's upstairs. I see you moved out. It was long overdue. You didn't answer my question. What am I doing here? I didn't say you could sit down. In fact, you've got some nerve even coming over here. You're right. I should have checked with you first. I just wanted to see Jody. Oh, I'm sure that did wonders for her. She's my daughter. Oh, yeah. Since when did you start noticing? All right. I deserve that. But I still have some rights. He told you all about it, huh? Why does it have to be so messy? What are you doing here, Joe? Marcia. I know saying I'm sorry doesn't fix anything. But can you try to forgive me? Hi, Joe. Why'd you do it? I don't know. Don't do that. Joe, there's something that I should tell you. And I haven't even told it to Jody yet, but we're moving to New York. I got a job there. What else have you got there? Yes. There's a man. Well, I guess that answers most of my questions. I hope you'll be happy. I mean that. I waited for you. I waited for you. For so long. I know. But there was this one place. Wheat farm in Oklahoma. I worked hard for those people. I worked until my hands bled. But it felt good. Real, anyway. I was doing something. I was then. I don't know why, but I knew then that I was going to make it. I was going to be okay. And are you, Joe? I'm getting there. More coffee or anything? No. It's late. I better be going. If you don't mind, I was thinking I'd like to take a peek in at Jody. Thanks. She's gone. What? I checked every room. Her bedroom window is open. Why, sir, did you repeatedly attempt to lure the child away from her home and school environment? I didn't. Threatening both her education and physical safety. It's a matter of police record, I isn't it, sir? I didn't try to lure Jody away from anything, and you know it. Now, there you go, getting mad again. Well, Joe, you just can't let your emotions take over like that. All right, all right, let's try it again. Joe, okay. hmm? you gotta get some sleep. Hmm? You know, it's almost morning. Hmm. Let's take a recess, a long one. 
Hmm. You gotta stop pushing yourself. You know what Mr. Nakamura said? That this appeal could go on for months, even years. Well, I just want to be prepared, that's all. <laughs> just a little... What is it, Lil? Lil? I'm just so afraid. Oh, honey. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. But look, I, I, I'm getting smarter all the time. I'm getting better. We're not going to lose. They don't know what kind of a fight they're in for. Joe, what I'm afraid of, what I'm afraid of is that I'm going to lose you. Oh, honey. Look, I'm only half alive as it is. I'm not really me anymore. You don't really want me that way, do you, honey? Really? I'm just so afraid. I know, I know. I'll get it. What in the world is... Jody! What? Jody! What? Is she here? No, why? Oh, my God. What's the matter? Come on, tell us. What happened? That's what we don't know. Jody's run away. What? We've been up all night talking. I gotta get back home. She no, might no, try no, 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 please tell us what happened. Marcia told me she was going to New York. Yeah? Jody didn't know that. We thought she might have overheard us. She'd gotten upset. And where else would she run but here? What about the police? We called them right away. They're checking the L station, the neighborhood. What about her friends? What about the barbershop? We thought of that already. We, we drove by. It was dark. This is your fault, you know. If you just... Stay it away. None of this would have happened. And if you hadn't moved across town and started seeing that man. Oh, calm down now, both of you. This isn't doing anyone any good, especially Jody. We're all as much at fault as anyone else. You sure she wasn't in the barber shop? She's got a key, you know. There would have been a light on. You didn't see anything on, did you? No. Just a pole. Did you say the pole the light was on was spinning? Oh, yeah. Dad, that light's been on since I was a kid. Lil, get dressed. Hurry up. Well, what? What? 41 years. Today, for the first time, I turned that light off. Jody? Jody? Jody, where are you? She's gone. She's not here. No, she's in there all right. I can feel it. Didn't you hear what Grandma said? This is serious. So now you know how I felt. I'll call the police and tell them we found her. All right, what's done is done. Let's just go. They said I'm supposed to say I'm sorry that I had everybody so worried. Are you? No. Fair enough. Why did you come back here anyway? I thought you didn't like me. I don't know. Why did you turn the pole off? Are you leaving too? Sometimes we don't have any choice, do we? That's not fair. No, it isn't. Why did you lie to me? You never won any of those trophies, did you? So you were the one who broke it. <laughs> I wondered about that. Yeah. You were bound to find out sooner or later. You never did any of those things, and you weren't famous either, were you? You never sang at the first All-Star game, I bet. And all those stories, they were just lies. All you ever did was cut hair. Yeah. That's all I ever did. We are such tough as dreams are made on. And our little life is rounded with a sleep. It's always the last line that counts. Uh, 
really better be going. No, I think you better not. What? I'm just getting warmed up. Look, let's not start. I'm not trying to start anything, Marcia. I just want to finish it. Now, please, just give us a few more minutes. I, I, I want to show Jody something. Just one last time. I, I, I've never had to beg for anything in my life, Marcia, but if that's what it takes... It's really that important. Where are we going? Around the corner, where dreams are made. What if I don't want to go? Then you'll never grow up. And neither will I. That's why I'm pounding. Come on, Bundy, let us in. Wait, hey, hey, I can't let you come in here, Joe. I've We're got my coming. orders. You, you can't. They're, they're setting up for today's game. Oh, go on with you. Oh, no, come on back here, you two. Sure he's going to sell out? Well, you know what with lawyer's fees. Lawyers. Maybe that won't be necessary. I mean, maybe it's cost us all too much already. I know one thing. Jody hasn't been happy in months. Neither have I. Nobody has. Why does it always end up having to cost so much, Joe? If only I knew the answer. Well, maybe there isn't any. But at least now we can remember. Yeah. And Lily, you and I were close once, too. You used to call me Mom. So much has changed. But not Jody. Maybe that's why she ran here tonight. She... She still needs the same things. You think we can work that out? But if you're moving... Well, it'll be hard. But, but there's still summer vacations? Holidays? Let's see what Jody thinks. Okay? Okay. You can't. They're setting up for today's game. Oh, go on. Come on, come on back here, you two. Listen. Wait, listen to me. Hey, you want to get me canned, Joe? Testing. One, two. Testing. One. Testing. One, two, three. It's on. It's on. Close your eyes, kid. Summer, 1933. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bomb bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free? And the home of the brave.
keep releasing it the first All-Star game. Well, actually, I didn't even get to see the game. I couldn't afford a ticket. I ended up standing outside uh, just to be there, you know, listening. Boy, was I excited. Then I heard this song, and everybody singing along, and I, I had to sing along too. I didn't want to miss anything. I don't know whether it's my voice or not, but you should have seen the way that the, the people <laughs> were staring at me. And that's the truth. But you see, I really did do it, but not the way I let you think. It's the same way with those old trophies. Do you, do you think you could forgive an old fake like me? Oh, Jody, Jody. You're some kind of kid. You're some kind of grandpa. My dad came back, just like I always said he would. Just uh, like you said he would. Hey, you think uh, maybe it's time to give him this? Maybe? Huh? Maybe. <laughs> hey, Waldowski. Stop messing up my ball field!